Yay. Okay, recording is on. Everything is fine. So, hello and welcome everyone. I'm Olga Heldbrand and today I will show you how to create uh, something like this. It can be also made as card. This is a small box uh, for card or for photos. It's 10 by 15 centimeters, so it's the perfect standard photo size. Yeah, all those sounds in the background, those are, it's my family, you know, just <coughs> moving around. Okay, so we will start uh, with some molds, because you can see that I have few kinds of mold prints here. And I would actually want them to dry a little bit, so, um, yeah. So, uh, I have two types of molds. One are like this lace, and those are really flat molds. And I do not use the clay with them. We will go to them, you know, uh, sometime later. I love molds like this. They are really deep and give us really nice print. I will show you really quickly. Okay. <clears throat> you can use <coughs> any type of clay that you want. I usually use a Krell Do and Dry. Um, I will show you the difference between the new one that I'm testing right now here. Uh, this one is really light, uh, light clay and you work with it a little bit different than with the one that I get used to, but I think that it's still not so hard. You can also use uh, the clays that you already have or know. Uh, I tested Prima clay and it's quite cool. It's really similar to Krell and I think that Krell uh, gets out from the mold uh, a little bit easier. Um, with those molds, uh, those uh, purple and pink one, I will show you the patterns in one second. Uh, I don't have such a trouble with getting out my print from the mold, but for example with um, Prima molds or with those molds, it's not a steward and it's rubber. The same thing is with uh, Prima molds, they are also rubbery and it's hard to get print out. Actually only ones that are rubber, no, not silicone, are those uh, really nice green ones. I bought them actually not in 30 knots in the retro craft shop uh, and they are rubber but look it's very flexible rubber so it's really easy to <coughs> get your print out. Yeah I just press it nice. If I have time I will just smooth it um, just to have even level between this uh, mold uh, edge and my print and you can see that I just get my perfect print and this one it's really light you, um, we will do a sun check in one minute um, except this print I think that I would like to have also this uh, long one but my Oh, my mold is filthy because I have it with me on my classes. I use them in classes and I have shiny powder inside and it's green. Okay, I have to live with that. If you don't know, I have the problem with green. <laughs> really serious problem um, with using a green. Um, so I will show you everything in one minute. I just need to, because I'm sick, I didn't make pre-prints before show. So I want them to be a little bit dry when I glue them on my work. So let's just feel it. This one is cool. It has some holes in the pattern. And if you, you know, feel it correctly, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So about um, 
those clay castings. So the one that I'm testing right now, it's really similar to Mata Stewart clay, but um, it, when it's dry, it will not change shape when you float it with water. And it's really important for me because Mata Stewart um, starts to melt when you use a lot of water. And I like to work with water for rainbow colors. I'm using a lot, 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 lot of water on my project. So then my prints uh, get a little bit melted and they were not so crisp and sharp. Okay, I can leave it uh, in mold to dry. Then it's really super easy to get it out. Um, but I think I will just take it out and let it dry. All the clays are, are drying. Um, I also tested the resin inside those um, molds. Wait, because I need to focus. When you get your print out, you don't want to pull it. You just want to pop it, because if you pull it, you will destroy the pattern. Yeah, and hello, my shiny powder. Yeah, okay, so I have two really nice prints right now. And uh, a little one, I think I have already printed previously, but okay. So first things first, um, okay, let's put it aside for one second because uh, I want to make a background and I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting than I uh, have done on my original project so it will have to dry. So I will just take a piece of paper and here I use some uh, white cardstock and today I couldn't find it so I found this beautiful Aria story paper and we don't have to rip it, you can just cut it aside with your huge trimmer but I have only my amazing Team Holtz trimmer so yeah let's just let's just cut it on this side <coughs> Yeah, and I want to cut out the white edge, so I will just cut, I think, in this, yeah, here. And now I will need something like 15, and here we're supposed to have 10. It's really cool trimmer guys and I really recommend it it's really handy because it's not so um, big and it cuts perfectly and I bought it together with Marta and it was really happy shopping moment I'm really I'm really happy that we done that okay so let's try it uh, okay, it's a little bit too small, so let's do it one more time. And this time maybe with marking. Yeah, perfect. Just perfect. What I'm doing here? Why I'm the one who is hosting the show? I don't even know how to trim the paper correctly. Come on, guys. What's, what's happening with me today? Okay, because the box fits, uh, inside the box fits um, this uh, 10 by 15 size perfectly, so obviously it have to be a little bit bigger, it's enough, uh, yeah. Um, okay, so let's do it like this. <coughs> I still love this trimmer. Yes, and okay, put it out. It's still like a little bit too much. I think this much will be good. 
guess. And now this much. Okay, now it's again too small, too much. Okay, let's cut. And now it's perfect. Yeah, I will get a little bit of edge, but it's fine. No, I really like the fine edge. Okay. So it's going to be like this. And notes are in the wrong side, but we will not care about it. It's only a pattern. And now I will take my stencil. My stencil, yes, my stencil is here. And it's um, my stencil from His and Hers collection. It's a um, mechanical pattern. And I really, really like this pattern. And I use it a lot. Okay, now I'm taking a uh, multipurpose medium. It's our um, heavy gel medium. And I'm looking in panic for my card to spread it or any kind of tool that I can use. Because I cleaned all my tools and I forgot to bring them. And I will not go for that right now. I know it's impossible. Okay, so I will just use a piece of foil. Yeah, I have here foil to glue the butterflies and we will spread our product with it. It's, it can be anything with straight edge because actually I just need a little bit just to have the resist effect with uh, my aquarels. Okay, I apply it. And now I will just spread it with a piece of foil. It's important not to move your stencil to put everything nice and flat and both stencil and paper have to be dry. And I will do the reverse pattern here. I still have a lot of this John medium on my professional spreading tool. I'm really well prepared today. Seriously. <clears throat> Oops, too much. Okay, and the axis goes here. Okay. Yeah, and uh, this one will go to cleaning and you can see that I have some pattern and it will dry clear. I will put it aside and it can dry clear. So now the, let's go back to our molds. So in 30 knots you can find two kinds of new, 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 new molds. Um, those hot pink ones, they are really silicone and you can see that we have beautiful feathers. This one actually has hole inside, so it's like a um, peacock feather with uh, really nice, you can really nicely arrange this, uh, this space here. Here we have really cute holes and beautiful branch. Here we have some mechanical parts when I put it like this. You can see that uh, those rings here have really intricate designs inside of them. We have uh, things like that. Those are just big borders, smaller border, and this one is the one I printed here. It's really intricate and you can see that it has re really plenty of uh, details that will show up beautifully. So, 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 come on guys, come on. Okay, so here I have a few prints that I did with uh, different uh, clays and now you can see the comparison. This is Butterfly from Creal. Can you hear that? It's like... Um, cluster so it makes sounds when it fall and this is the moth that uh, I made from this really light uh, clay and it's no sound at all 
it's really really light so it's perfect for cards and those um, uh, projects that um, <coughs> you don't want to put too much weight on okay and here I have some prints from molds that I showed you before those wings are from this mold with plenty of wings and feathers and wings are over here and they have lots of details here I have some screws some owls those owls are just adorable they made really huge statement on my last classes oh the third one yeah I knew it the third one it's the best one <laughs> it's so cute Oh, and with owls, we have also really nice moon, and I think I will use it in upcoming projects. I have a little bit of prints from uh, the mechanical stuff, and here I have this little thing printed, and I printed from this mold. Oh, and it just like like a dream, you know. It came up with all the clays I tested. And yeah okay and I have also things like that this is I don't know if you can see it <coughs> uh, this is the lace that I uh, printed with uh, Joe medium on this flat uh, mold and this one I printed with a uh, Joe medium with gesso and I will show you right now how to do it and I hope that it will be dry enough at the end of the show to take it out of the mold from mold uh, those prints have big advantage on the other ones uh, you can fold them they are really 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 plastic and they are made with this so they primed already and when you stick it on your work you have beautiful primed uh, <coughs> texture <coughs> okay so uh, to make uh, you can print them just with gesso but because our gesso is really heavy product and it's uh, made for priming surfaces I like to mix um, like uh, half to half uh, multi-purpose show medium I picked this one because it dry a little bit faster than a regular one and my uh, my I don't know how to call it my mixture is not so liquid so it's really uh, easy to spread it inside the mold and I add 13 odds just so it's really white so even if it's just half to half you still have you know white opaque print okay and I just mix it mix it mix it and actually consistency of the product will not change so much um, I keep it uh, the access I keep it in this jar and it's the best if you leave it like with half of jar of uh, air to dry a little bit then it dries faster in your mold okay that's good so I just packed in I usually do it with a palette knife or something like that but as we already agreed I didn't prepare anything here and I will not go to look for it so I will use my spreading tool to spread this one as well and I just want to fill it like you put the butter on the sandwich and I just filling all the holes and taking out the excess because the excess will be visible and it will dry as a part of your print and we don't want it we want those holes to be you know perfectly printed okay and now I have to leave it for uh, for a dry and you can see that the mold is still really flexible okay I will put it on my uh, heater here I have one oh my god 
it's all filthy already and I just clean it okay here we have the one that I already printed today in the morning and I hope it's dry enough to show you how nicely it came out from the mold uh, it's still not dry enough yet to be picked up but I will be really really gentle and I hope that it will come out nice and in one piece it's usually take it a few hours to dry and it wasn't morning it was my morning so let's agree it wasn't six o'clock it was around 3 p.m. <laughs> Yeah, so you can see that it's already dried enough to get out from this really intricate mold. Go, 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 go. Yay. Okay, and I didn't rip it off apart. Oh my god, what happened with this guy? Let's just... Yeah, when it's really dry, dry, dry. Okay. Yeah. See, and it's perfect. I printed one extra <laughs> just in case that <laughs> this one will not come out so nicely. And we will put it on the, our card in one minute. And you can see that this mold is also really, really uh, thin. And if I try to fill it with my um, clay, <clears throat> it's hard to fill all those holes and not pick up the clay. It's really hard to fill it. So it's better to run it with uh, the gesture and um, the charming mixture. Okay, let's go back to our card. You can see that it's almost dry and the pattern is visible a little bit, but it's dried translucent so now I will stick my um, paper to my base and I don't see anywhere my cloth okay no worries I have a piece of paper here yeah okay I don't want to have water on my brush um, because it will uh, weigh my paper too much I apply it on the surface that I want to stick something and I apply it on the back of this top part this way I, I can be sure that things will not wave and it's still not dried yet so I'm really I'm really careful with that to not destroy my pattern. Okay. Okay, just print, just glue it, just stick down. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Now I will put one of uh, of my prints over here. It's really fast project when you already have uh, molds printed, so it's really easy. And because it's so delicate, I just glue it directly on the box, piece by piece. It takes a little bit of time. I'm sure that you can use uh, siren to make it adhesive, but not everyone has this cool siren thing that you sweep, uh, swap, swap, I don't know, <laughs> where you put your uh, piece of paper and just make it a sticker. Okay, I want it to be as much on the center as I can able it somehow I'm not the best with straight 
things and with saying if it's straight it's not straight it will never be so straight as I would like to how do you do it how do you measure stuff to be exactly in the center it's my question for all your perfectionists how, how, how I can do it without measuring 10,000 10, 10, times okay Okay. Yeah, let it sit. And now my mold print and it's still wet and I don't care, but I do not cover the very edge with gel medium because all the clays shrink a little bit. Um up to 30% actually when they dry. And I don't want to have my gel medium marks visible at any point. Okay, I think that I put it like this. Yeah, to not cover so much of this pattern. So I will do it like this again. And this time I have also this one. And I think that I will put it over here. No, no, it doesn't fit. Okay. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Now, cool thing, uh, those are cheapboard catalogs from Polish company. It's called Snippa. They have really lot of cool designs, and I discovered those babies. Just not so far along. <coughs> just not so long ago. <coughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, so we have different sizes and different patterns and they look really cool when they are layered. You can layer uh, the same pattern, just different sizes, but I think it looks so, so cool when you, you know, just mix them a little bit. Yeah, this one uh, you can put like this. See, and you have, you know, different ways of managing one chipboard okay so i stick them together and then uh actually i take back the package because i don't like the mess on my table so i reuse packages that chipboards come in and i do the same thing with all packages from stencils all those foil elements you have to throw them away on some point anyway but when I throw away mines they are really dirty and it's not such a waste for me and I don't have to clean so much then around my area so it saved my time okay I cover it with one coat of gesso just because I like them to be you know nice and white and now I need some distance material so I go back to this chipboard leftover <coughs> and I just cut a piece of it you know to create a distance material for myself and again not wasting anything this not wasting thing it's awful thing when you have to clean up and I don't want to throw away anything because I can use it the hole will be not visible through the butterfly so I can just stick it no it's too big mm -hmm. oh my god okay 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 and now I will just put it here on top of my print and you can hit your uh, mold prints with heat gun to you know accelerate um, grind process okay and this small one was here as um, a filling and the the small ones those are pretty nice but in 30 knots there's a whole set of different uh, toppers they are quite small designs but they are perfect to you know 
at just finishing topper or down down here on the project to close it up. I like when things are closed up when the composition is closed. Okay, so now we go into our butterflies and I will use uh, I can put it aside this one. I will use my Hisson House uh, paper collection and I will cut this butterfly to make my job easier. I just take a little bit of multimedial and I rub it in. Just thin layer, but you can see that it make my design sharper a little bit and it sealed the paper from and the top so it's easier to cut out details without uh, destroying the paper especially when you have a lot of fuzzy cutting this uh, this thing is cool okay yeah and i will read your comments on the chat yeah, it was. Uh, I see what that you are talking about my mixture. It was half of gel medium to half of gesso, and I use multi medium uh, as gel medium base. It's really give me nice elastic finish, and you can use only gel medium, uh, but you cannot use only gesso or um, texture paste will not work as well because those products include some cluster it helps the paints to hold on to our product so it includes a cluster and uh, it will break when you try to get your mold out mold print out okay I chose the most intricate butterfly on the world actually when I cut uh, cut out those uh, intricate elements, you can see that I'm moving uh, my paper. And not my scissors, because when you move your scissors, you get this um, ugly edge around your die cut. And we don't want it. You can, if you are lazy, you can use also um, already uh, die cutted butterflies um, or uh, I use the one from Element from this collection but I will show you in one second. We have whole paper with butterflies. I designed it especially for Marta because Marta really liked to cut out butterflies and she really asked for whole paper to cut out the butterflies so we have whole paper on one side you have uh, light butterflies on dark background on the second one you have white butterflies you can color them part of them are already with color so if you like to cut out butterflies if you like this pattern you will love this paper. Okay, now I take the sticker from my collection as well and I take a piece of plastic and I just stick it. Whole butterfly have to be on this plastic thing. And now we have two sides of our butterfly. One is nice and matte, it's a sticker part and on the second part you have really nice and glossy butterfly and now we cut this guy <clears throat> I cut him just the same as I cut uh, the paper one I really like to this trick I already show it once and that's not life uh, when I did uh, cards with dimensional butterflies, they look so cool. Just stick them on the foil and you have nice, sturdy, translucent butterfly because the foil is sturdy. And I will show you in one second how nice you can 
use the wings of butterfly. You can also use if you have um, some stamps with nice butterflies. We have lots of stickers, but uh, if you don't have them, you can just stamp it with uh, stasm on the foil. Uh, if you are a good stamper, I'm not a good stamper, and my stamp prints are never so perfect. Okay. Oh, I cut out a part of his head. Oh, I'm so sorry, but I don't have next one. <laughs> so we have to take this injured one. Okay. Yeah, and the um, butterflies are in different size. This one is slightly better, uh, bigger, <laughs> but I still want to put him on the top. And you can see that uh, I prefer actually to use the matte side. You can see that the pattern is a little bit more increased on the glossy side and I'm sorry about my hands, I'm just up to classes so uh, my hands are stained in blue okay and look I just put the wings up and I have really nice ooh, dimensional element and I want it to be more dimensional, so I need foam square to put on the belly. And the best one is the black one. And where we have the black squares. Yay. Come on, little black busters. I know you I know you are here. I have them here. Okay, I just want to make it a little bit smaller, so I fold it in half. <coughs> <coughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, Emily. Uh, hi, Amelia. <laughs> so uh, I make. 13 art gesso with 13 arts multi-purpose medium half to half half of one and half to of other one and I just mix them in the um, pot and leave in this pot uh, with a little bit of air so you have to use it I would say that uh, the shelf life of this uh, pre-mixed uh, product will be um, Dependingly of how much air you have inside the jar, um, around two weeks. So if you don't use it, then it will dry for the rock inside um, of your um, coin container. So yeah, but you can use it also as texture paste. And you don't have to make so much and it's the best I would say one or two days after spending with uh, with uh, in, the, in, the, in the jar when it's dried a little bit yeah okay I don't have to put anything under those um, those uh, wings because uh, actually uh, they hold themselves, see how dimensional it is and now just to be sure that it will stick I'm adding a little bit of draw medium and just place it here yeah and it's sitting here nice okay so we can put him aside and we can I can show it to you on the original project see the the wings are really sturdy even uh, if you send it in envelope and then let it go they will rise really nice and up and uh, because it's foil it's really sturdy and I like this effect very very much <coughs> Okay, so now we need some stuff that are here under the butterfly. See, I have a little uh, rose picking up. So I cut out a few of those <coughs> elements already for you. Actually, I have them pre-cut to the 
for this one and I need one more with this um, uh, little not so open uh, rose here so I will just cut out part of this cloth yes I cut out those uh, really intricate stuff around the rose because it will take me ages to cut it out nicely and I want just this part this part will go for later I just want a few leaves and this rose put here yeah it's rose put, this part of rose that it's not so opened uh, oh my god I have have stopped on the chat okay <clears throat> we still have 15 minutes and we will finish this project because it's the last step actually what I'm doing right now okay so now uh, I didn't prime this paper because I will color it with my inks and I just I just slide it because remember I add some dimensional some dimension under my key log so now I can slide the, um, my images and I think that this one will be cool not, not this one this part yeah we can go with a little bit bigger no I cannot unglue it already ah. yeah just just enough perfect I hope that this time you cannot hear my music because I know that you don't you don't share my music taste <laughs> okay so now we go to coloring I can close up my jars because I will not need them I can throw my papers on my floor and clean them out later to make some space here and just you know uh, covered with piles of stuff here okay those key locks I use them all the time so I will leave them somewhere invisible spot okay so now uh, yeah this is primed this is not primed so it can catch a little bit of colors this one is primed with just so it will not catch the color and in the background I add a little bit of texture that will give us now resin effect and the one from example is uh, in pink yellow and purple and I think that uh, Today we will make it in blue. Uh, I'm just checking if my inks are cool. Yeah, so I have navy blue. Uh, I have bordeaux. Uh, I have violet. Oh my god, sorry, I didn't show it correctly. And um, I want also olive green yeah and those are uh, Ida first inks it's one of the first product that 30 knots have ever put in their offer and this is the product that I fell in uh, with whole brand actually because uh, first mists were with high shine we had only shiny ones and I wasn't convinced to shine there then but now I love my shiny things and I will not <laughs> replace them so yeah but those inks were the first product that I fell in love and I loved whole brand and we are together almost since then so here I have water brush and the regular brush. 
I want to have some a parallel effect in the background, so I need to wet my paper a little bit to have those nice spreads. And I will just put like a dot of each color in front of the bottle. They are really, really intense. That's why I don't add them directly on my project. Yeah, so I want to start with olive green and I just add it on all leaves of my roses because it's only my coloring color and I'm trying not to touch the paper because, oh wait, I will put it a little bit higher yeah, now, now it's visible and only the leaf area we are coloring with this one I will take it like this because I usually actual because usually actually I'm not putting my project on the table when I'm coloring it yes so I put the first layer of my color now just clean my brush from the yellow uh, from the green and now I'm going with Bordeaux on my flowers I'm not covering whole flower at the same time I'm starting with some spots because then I just add a lot of water and you know create a gradient on my flower I strongly recommend you to have a glass mat or glass top desk desktop um, it's really convenient, especially when you're using a lot of watercolors. I, I will just wipe out the excess later on. Uh, but I always mix my colors on my glass mat. Yay! Okay. It's a little bit too pink for my taste right now, but yeah, but it's okay. Yeah, and I now I will start to add the colors to my background. And I spread them with my water brush to have this nice aquarelly effect. I just spread them around. I like those stains, so uh, I just squeeze my brush to add more water while I'm painting and then I will just drag the colors around. Okay, a little bit of blue and now a little bit of purple. And um, I'm sorry for one second. Co się stało, kochanie? Dobranoc. Mogę ci tego na dobranoc mieć buziaka i przytulasa? Tak, możesz chodź. I'm sorry, I'm just saying good night. <laughs> yeah, okay, it's fine. It's a mummy moment. I'm so sorry. He's supposed to be in bed already. Yeah, so now I just flick a few dots here and then. There. And now purple ones. And I really miss the third color here, so I think we will add amber yellow. I think that it was some time before I I was raving about this color so I can tell you about it one more time it's my favorite color of all the times we have it in all products in all lines it's not orange it's not yellow it is perfect to mix with 
colorful and uh, warm tones it's always the best color choice that you can make it's this vintage yellow yeah so um, okay yeah a little bit more okay and now we will try it with heat gun okay I can also spray it a little bit more to have more stains I'm adding more and more. I said it's enough, and I'm adding more and more. Okay, it's enough. It's really enough. So just okay. I will turn on the heat gun because we still have some splashing to to do. Okay, I can show you more project, projects um, that I created with mods with a little bit different techniques than this one. Because, um, yeah, I'm the mold fanatic right now. I love them since I touched my Martha Stewart molds for the first time. And lately, you have so many mold. Um, um, molds on the market, so many patterns, there are new, totally new clays that you can have fun with and yeah okay I cannot heat it with heat gun because my butterfly is shrinking <laughs> I shrink it like shrink plastic but it looks fine still looks fine okay now we will add white splashes from white splash ink And actually my gel medium wasn't dried yet so you can see like here instead of resin effect I have really cool color gradient. It happens if gel medium is totally dry you can have really nice uh, resin effect here. Yeah, let's take a small stick and I will just add a lot of splashes because I like them. And the original project is also finished with really nice drops. I will show you them in one second. I'm moving around my project uh, because some of drops are not like perfectly round. They have some paint smudges and I just want to have those smudges in different directions. Okay, and let's give this area a nice wipe. Okay, and I'm using those perfect those uh, liquid pearls it's newer jewel drops they are also uh, crystal drops and uh, the difference is those uh, dry translucent and it's really easy to use it I just squeeze it yeah of course like always you just squeeze it and each time it doesn't matter how long do you press what your technique um, it will stay round perfectly round bead and this color that I'm using right now it's um, mist I don't remember it's gray mist or something like that and it's totally translucent so it's like raindrop effect similar I think glossy accent effect but the drop is always perfectly round even when I'm hurry and you can see that at first it looked like it had this 
not nice finish that it will stay with this um, I don't know how to say it <laughs> this 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 long thing that stays when I pick up my um, applicator and they usually if you ever use any kind of liquid pearls you know that they it, it's really pain in the packet <laughs> to make them nice and round each time and equal it's really hard for me at least and with those it's just you know making those just squeezing and they coming out with perfectly round shape I will show them to you in one minute now it's my compulsive behavior that when I started I have to finish it the line have to be perfect yeah so there is no rule if you will hold it you know uh, straight or in angle angle or whatever look those those pearls are just perfectly round pearls on the on original project you can see that they dry totally translucent and here I did really tiny ones and each one of them is rounded there are no spikes yeah the spike the the, the spiky thing yeah I, I remember there are no spikes they are just perfectly round okay I still missed something here so I'm sorry, but it wasn't an original project because I didn't need it then. Now I use different colors. Mm. I would like to. Ow! Okay, I will stick it later on because right now I stick it to one of my perfect pearls. It's a white lace. It's a sticker uh, from Aria Story Collection. We have. They are white actually, they are all white, I will show you. They are really cool to use on uh, darker surface or on patterned aquarel surface. We have beautiful white butterfly and the white print is totally opaque and matte on <coughs> all surfaces. So yeah, basically it's done. I will just...